small world graphs. K nearest neighbor graphs have a uniform out degree and therefore that certainly isn't a power law distribution of the out degree. But real world networks, as we saw last time, tend to be scale free and as we're about to see, are also small world. So real world neighbor networks, uh, typically we have a very large N, K is much smaller, so K is on the scale of tens or hundreds, N is billions or trillions. Uh, they tend to add edges somewhat randomly. They tend to be scale free, we've seen that concept already. They tend to be small world, which means a small average shortest path length, and highly clustered. Let's look at this before we look at K nearest neighbor networks in more detail. Do we begin with the clustering coefficient? Now we're going to look at a graph G, and for now we're going to assume that it is an undirected graph. The edges do not have directions. If V is a vertex in a graph G, the clustering coefficient, uh, little cc of V, is the ratio of the number of pairs of adjacent neighbors to the number of pairs of neighbors. So for example, we've got this regular graph, k equals 4. So if we pick a vertex, it has four neighbors, which we'll label as 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can say, well, how many possible pairings of the neighbors are there? Well, there are six, one with two, one with three, one with four, two with three, two with four, and three with four. But the actual uh, adjacencies, one's adjacent to two, and two's adjacent to three. So of the six, only two actually occur in the neighborhood of V. So the clustering coefficient of V is two over six, or a third. A scale-free graph tends to be hubs, which are of higher degree, uh, connected to other hubs. Let's pick a center of a hub. It's got seven neighbors. And of those seven neighbors, there are 21 different ways of pairing those neighbors with each other. So 21 possible adjacencies in the neighborhood, but only one that's actually there. Six is adjacent to four. Or 4 adjacent to 6, and therefore the clustering coefficient is 1 over 21. Now we define the clustering coefficient of a graph to be the average of the clustering coefficients of its vertices. So capital CC of G must also be between 0 and 1, and clustering coefficient of a graph close to 1 means the graph is highly clustered on average. Clustering coefficient of a graph close to 0 means the graph is not highly clustered on average. Now, one of the models uh, that we use quite often are called random graphs. An erdos renier random graph, G of n, P, has n vertices, where n is large, and there is a probability P that for any two vertices chosen at random, that they are adjacent. So you choose two vertices at random and connect them with a probability P. That means the average degree of a vertex is uh, this angle brackets of k is p times n, the probability times the number of vertices. So if we look at the clustering coefficient, then the clustering coefficient of the graph uh, is equal to p because that's the expected value over uh, k over n, and that's close to zero because k is much, much smaller than n and therefore the clustering coefficient of a random graph is practically zero. be important a little later. Path length is the shortest distance between two vertices. So if I've got a vertex U and V, there are many different ways I can go in a connected graph from U to V, but the shortest one is what we tend to think of as the actual distance. So here we have a length of 4 from u to v. Here we also have a length of 4 from u to v. And this other path has a length of 7. And there we have a path which has a length of 3. So 3 would be called the path length, the shortest distance from u to v. Uh, little d of u comma v denotes the path length between two vertices. So here d of u comma v is 3. The average path length of a connected graph, G, is the average over pairs of vertices of the path lengths. So 
we would say that d of u comma v is zero if u is equal to v and that's really for convenience and it just allows us to write down this formula very simply so if I have the path 0 to 1 to 2 then the distance from 0 to 1 and the distance from 1 to 2 is 1 but the distance from 0 to 2 is 2 so the path length is the average 1 plus 1 plus 2 over 3 which is 4 thirds and that's the average path length if I have a path 0 1 2 3 then I have from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3 is distance 1, 0 to 2, 1 to 3 is the distance of 2, and 0 to 3 is the distance of 3. So that means I have uh, 3 occurrences of a distance of 1, 2 of a distance of 2, and 1 of a distance of 3 divided by 6 total, and that means the average path length of the path on 3 vertices is 5 thirds. If we do this in general, where we go from 0 to n minus 1, so we have n vertices and a path through n vertices. Well, I'll let you think about it. But you can see there is a pattern and you can figure it out. Now suppose we have a triangle. The average path length of a triangle is 1 because all the uh, paths that you get are repeated the average path length of this cycle on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the average path length is 2. And then on this longer uh, cycle, the average path length is 3. So again, there's actually a formula you can write down for the average path length of a cycle. Now the small world phenomenon is that many real world graphs, g on average, are highly clustered and tend to have nodes that are close to each other. So we say that a graph is small world if the clustering coefficient of the graph is close to 1 and the path length of the graph is close to 1 relative to the size of the graph. So a good example of this are airline networks. So there's a short average path length because there are at most two or three flights to get from any destination or any departure to your destination. Uh, they tend to be highly clustered because most of the flights come out of only a few hubs. A gene regulatory network tends to be small world. The smaller the uh, average path length is, the more quickly a cell, and therefore the organism that it's a part of, can modify its activity. The larger the clustering coefficient is, the more robust is the cellular response to various stimuli. Now, Watts and Strogatz, in the, uh, an article in Nature in 1998, created a model of small world graphs. Their motivation was to look first at random graphs. And notice they are exponential. They are not locally clustered. They do not tend to have hubs. And their degree distribution converges to a Poisson distribution. So they started with a ring lattice of order n and they said let k be even and what they did was they connected each vertex to its k over 2 neighbors to the right and k over 2 neighbors to the left. And so here we have an example for n equals 10 and k equals 4. And here's n equals 15 and k equals 6. So these are K regular graphs. They all have, uh, every vertex has degree, degree K. And then they rewired. And their rewiring scheme was for each node I and each ed I J, where I is less than J, with probability P, replace I J with I K, where K is chosen uniformly from those vertices not equal to or adjacent to I. So of all the things that I is not connected to and not itself, you just randomly choose, uniformly randomly choose another vertex to hook it up to. So here's n equals 10, k equals 4, p equals 0. Here I've rewired with a probability p of 0 0.2 and you can see that it's we've lost some of the uh, connectivity on the edge, the ring lattice structure, and we've added these uh, diagonals, these connections across the ring structure, but just 
very few, not a whole lot. So for p equals 0, there's no rewiring. The average path length, which we'll call L of 0, L here is going to be a function of p, that's n over 2k, and that's much, much greater than 1 because we want to you do this model when n is much, much larger than k. So n over 2k is extremely large. So again, p equals 0, uh, L of 0, so L is going to be a function of p, as we'll see in a minute. The clustering coefficient for p equals 0 is 3 times k minus 2 over 4 times quantity k minus 1. And as k goes to becomes larger, that's 3 over 4. So that gives us a good measure. Uh, k is never going to be nearly as large as n, but k can be large. And notice that the clustering coefficient of 0 is independent of n. For p equals 1, we have a completely random graph, an erdos renyi graph. And there you can show the average path length is 1, the log of n over the log of k, and the clustering coefficient when the probability is 1 is practically 0, as we saw a bit earlier. So L of p and C, C of p are the average shortest path length and clustering coefficient for a ring lattice, which we rewire with probability p. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at L of p over L of 0 and CC of p over CC of 0. That way both of these start at 1 and both n close to 0 as functions of p as we go over the interval 0, 1 as p ranges over 0, 1. But they behave quite differently. So we're going to look at, uh, for instance, n equals 1000 and k equals 10. L of 0 is 50.5. The clustering coefficient is 0 0.67. And here is what we get. The clustering coefficient of p over the clustering coefficient of 0 starts at 1, but it's sort of concave down. It goes out for a ways and then curves down toward 1. Notice we're using a logarithmic scale on the x-axis because this uh, dropping down to 0 happens pretty quickly. But the clustering coefficient of p over cc of 0 uh, that drops down to from 1 to 0 uh, much more slowly than L of p over L of 0. So it looks sort of concave up. And so because it's sort of concave up and dropping from 1 to 0, and the other one's concave down and dropping from 1 to 0, where the L of p over L of 0 has gotten close to 0, and the clustering coefficient has, has remained close to 1, the, those p's give us small world graphs. So here we're looking at uh, at 0, we get 50 and 0 0.667 for the uh, length and the clustering coefficient. At 0 0.01, we get 9 and 0 0.65 for the clustering coefficient. And at 1, we get 3.267 and 0 0.009. Uh, for the clustering coefficient. So you can see the clustering coefficient remains high even as the path length drops to zero quickly. So graphs produced with P in this region are highly clustered and have a short average distance between vertices. They're small world. Now their degree distribution, however, uh, is not scale free. So let's look for example at Facebook. There are about a billion Facebook users uh, about 70 billion links and Twitter is similar. The average shortest path length in Facebook is 4. Uh, you and a randomly chosen somebody else, uh, a friend of your friend knows a friend of their friend. So on average there's only 4 links between you and anybody else in the world through Facebook. 4 degrees of separation. Now, the high clustering coefficient is due to the existence of communities. A community is a highly connected hub. Communities tend to attract members of other communities, forming even bigger communities. So small world graphs, a graph is small world of vertices tend to be relatively close to each other, highly transitive, in other words we get a community type structure, and often this comes from a hierarchical structure communities of communities of communities and paths between the communities tending to be short. But again, small world need not be scale free.